You are listening to the Foundry Church Podcast. If you'd like to know more about us, visit www.foundrychurch.net. Amen. Friends, you may be seated at this time. My name's Eric Folkers. We just want to welcome you and say thank you for worshiping with us on this Thanksgiving Eve. It's always so exciting because you never really know what's going to happen when all the family comes over, right? Just a quick thing. Anybody nervous about tomorrow? No, don't answer because your family may be sitting with you. Okay, welcome to Thanksgiving service here. We are so excited to worship with you. And one of the things we're going to do tonight, and all the for the younger kids in the room, these were my favorite words from any pulpit as a child. There's going to be two very short messages, not a big one. It'll be quick and easy for you, right? So if you want to shout amen as a child... I'll receive your blessing. Um, I remember these nights, and I wanted pie at church, and you notice we have it. Please eat it. We are people gathered understanding that we have so much to be thankful for. And as we gather tonight, we're going to spend a few minutes unpacking, just a few minutes unpacking a strange location in the Bible, 1 Chronicles chapter 16. It's, a, it's um, part of the history of David, King David. And I think it's important to note what goes on right at the end of chapter 15. Right preceding this, we have David before the Ark of God, before the Ark of the Covenant, and he's coming to give thanks. He's coming, bringing the Ark of the Covenant from where it had been to the city of David. And as the Ark is going, he precedes it by dancing. He's the king, and he dances so hard his clothes come off. (laughs) Ever have that happen before? Don't raise your hand. (laughs) Right? Can you imagine that? Like, just, just imagine that. The king dancing so hard that his clothes come off. I dig that scripture. I like that that says that maybe the solemn posterior kind of move of church, not posterior, um, (laughs) that was a weird one. Um, The solemn posture, did I say posterior? Gee, my word, thanksgiving. Um, The solemn posture of the church sometimes gets lost from the vibrant engagement of what God's doing. God's doing something and we can be thankful. We can literally just pour out our best to God and not be afraid. And what we find in 1 Chronicles chapter 16 is the same king who had just danced the ark into the city now does this. It says that David first appointed Asaph and his associates to give praise to the Lord in the following manner. We are about to see one of the original orders of worship of how worship is to be conducted in the kingdom of Israel. And it said this, give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. That is one of the primary facets of what David wants to see happen in worship. He wants to see God, praise God, proclaim his name, and remember out loud, make known to the nations what he has done. I think that's something we can do. We can talk for a few minutes tonight about what God has done. We can spend a minute here and just be thankful on a a large scale. Like the fact that we're gathered in a room and we're safe to worship here. I have been and hopefully will be again in other parts of the world where it's not safe to gather and worship, where what we're doing and kind of taking for granted is something people would love and have given their lives to see. We gather in freedom to worship the Lord our God, and it's worth giving thanks for. We understand that we are, um, we're also blessed in many ways that you can't even quantify. Do you know you're in the top few percent of the world's population if you know A, how to read a book, and B, can afford to buy one? Did you know that puts you in the top 3% of the world's population in terms of wealth and influence? Which means this, for all of us who spent time in kindergarten through first grade learning our ABCs, we've been blessed If you've been educated, if you can read, if you've been blessed the way we've been blessed, you you have much to be thankful for. Yeah, life might not be the easiest, but you are still richly blessed. And then I started stepping back and thinking, how do we make known among the nations what else he's done? Those are big things, but then my life is kind of foundry-centric. You know, Erica and I both work here. Our kids are here all the time. We, w- this seems to swallow our life whole often, right? And we love the Foundry Church. So we just sat down and we went through some things. 
And we said, what are you thankful for? The first thing was our church. We're thankful for our church, that we're not going at it alone, that we're gathered with other people. We're thankful that Foundry West has launched. It's awesome. And it's crazy. And we still don't know what we're doing. We lovingly refer to what we're doing in this church as building the airplane as it falls out of the sky. We don't have a method. We have obedience. And we're thankful for it. We're thankful for the staff of this church, for the volunteers in this church. It takes 100 volunteers a week to pull off what this church does. I can't thank them enough. I love, this is one thing I super duper love about our church. You can come in here in a pair of like $20 jeans that are dirty and greasy. And if you walk in with someone who's wearing a pair of $300 jeans and some guy's like, what? Yeah, it's true. Apparently somebody wears $300 jeans, but you can walk in with them and you will not be treated better based on what you're wearing. This is one of the most non-judgmental places I've ever been. You get to come as you are. If you come in a suit, you actually feel awkward because we're like, is, whoa, it's not like a funeral or something, is it? I would have worn my nice jeans. Like, you know, you can come here and kind of be who you are. It's not dress up for, for anything. We're not, it's just kind of free. Come as you are, meet God on his terms. I love looking back over at the homes of the foundry over these past few years. And I spent some time just thanking God for the gym at Riesland Reformed, where we got started, for Benjamin's Hope for hosting us when we were building Maine and then moving to Maine and realizing, oh my word, it's too small and, and starting to do new things. Then moving back out to Ben's Hope with the Foundry West to which I think Vreeson's like, nope, you can't come back to the gym. No. And, and I, I look at that and I'm like, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that God has done that. I am thankful that there are people right now that you're living this out on mission. You as a church are doing things I didn't know people in West Michigan would actually start doing. You've started inviting people who don't know Jesus to come to church and meet his church. Not meet in it, meet them. Meet the living church. And I'm thankful for you and the influence you've had on my life and the way you've helped clarify the vision of this church, not only to know God, but to also make him known. I'm thankful for that. I love that God called unqualified people here. Most people go through seminary in three years. It took me nine, <laughs> nine. People like celebrate, it's such an accomplishment. I'm like, no, uh, yeah, right, that noise. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> like it's, I, I'm, I probably should, yeah. It just, I look, I said posterior earlier. It's not really that polished. Most of our employees at the Foundry Church have backgrounds in business. There's historians. There's a number of different things. None of us are trained to do church. I love that God called the unqualified and qualified them with his calling. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the fact that 85% of you, I didn't know three years ago. My life has been blessed by that. I hope you're being blessed by being connected with one another. When I look at this, I realize why the next scripture is so important. It says this, sing to him, sing praise to him and tell of all of his wonderful acts. Tell of all his wonderful acts. One of the reasons we worship in song is it's a response to God's goodness. No matter how hard circumstances may have been, his goodness is to be worshiped. His character is to be remembered. And we as people know that God has ordained worship and we are called to participate in that ordained worship of God. We are doing something special here when we gather and we worship and we sing. My daughter, Bella, said this and she's one of my just favorite people on the whole earth. I just adore her and she said this one time and it was when I knew that she was super special. Um, but we were, we were writing and she said, do you, I actually we were in the house and she said, um, do you think that before the fall, like Adam and Eve and the animals and everything, they sang to one another? Wasn't this just speech? There was notes, there was music. And that pairs really well with the theologian C.S. Lewis, who wrote the Chronicles of Narnia and his first, the kind of prelogue of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was um, the story of Aslan singing creation throughout Narnia and bringing that world to life. And Lewis had a similar vision as my daughter, which made my heart go, because I love C.S. Lewis. I love that question. Do you think they sang before the fall came? 
and remove the beauty of the notes from our lives? Do you think there was this worship? And I think God ordains worship. God calls creation to give forth worship. And if you listen in the woods one day, if you listen by the ocean, the lakeshore, anywhere, if you listen to creation, it's crying out again and again the faithfulness of God. Why wouldn't we join them in it? We were made for this. It's time for the song to return. And not just a song of give me some more, but a song of thank you. Thank you, God. Oh, the reasons we have to bless the Lord in this place for what he's done. So I invite you to join me in re-entering the song of creation back to its creator, in rejoining the song that says that, yes, this world may be broken in many ways, but the one who authored it sustains it and is redeeming, redeeming it. He is worthy of all praise. Amen? Amen. Join me in it. I'm Lucy, and uh, I'm thankful for uh, being able to be a part of a, such a great church. My name is Chloe, and I'm thankful to have a big family. I'm Oscar. I'm thankful for my family, my goats, and cheesy breadsticks. Hi, my name is Malaya Colleen, and I'm thankful for my dad and my mom. I'm Jack, and I'm thankful for all the people that tell me they love me every single day. I'm thankful for being back in my hometown and just being a part of this church and getting involved with the youth. And my aunt, and my brother, and my cousins. I am thankful for all of the amazing people that I get to work with on a daily basis at Compassion Heart Ministry. I am thankful for the continuous guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit in my life and in the lives of others. My dog, and my grandma, and my grandpa. I am thankful for all the youth group leaders I get to lead youth group with. I am thankful for Brittany bringing me closer to God because I have strayed away a little bit and she is bringing him back into my life. And it's awesome. And music. Hi, my name is Levi Blumen and I am thankful for my family and friends. Hi, my name is Blake Skipper and I'm thankful for my food, for food and my family and friends. My name is Bruce and Colleen, and I'm thankful for my family. Our Mike and Carrie Monday and our son Trey, uh, we're very thankful for um, the opportunity to serve at uh, Foundry West and, and giving us a place to, uh, um, to call home and to do outreach and to get involved. Hi, my name is Amanda Skipper, and I'm thankful for the beauty of nature all around us and just the reminder of how powerful God is. I'm thankful for the great physician because the doctors told us my mom wouldn't be here right now and she's making the turkey for Thanksgiving. So we're going to celebrate her and celebrate God this Thanksgiving. Hi, my name is Tanner and I'm thankful for my family and food to eat and just I'm thankful for my friends. Hi, my name is Austin and I'm thankful for Deer Hunt and best friends. Hi, my name is Cindy Nyhoff, and this is my good friend Kylie Motter. We've been friends for over 20 years, but she is um, cancer free, and we are so very, very grateful to um, be celebrating uh, Thanksgiving with Kylie because there were times in this year when that was in question. Hi, I'm Renee Formsma, and I, I am thankful for grandmas. The life lessons that I have learned from them are incredible and also their faith. They have taught me so much about loving Jesus and loving others. My name is Mike. Um, I am very thankful for my family. Um, I'm very thank thankful for uh, God and just all his blessings that he pours upon us each and every day. For Hugh and Pam Randall. Thankful for a job that uh, we both love, our jobs, and uh, just having a great church uh, family, small group, and so forth. Very thankful for all of that. I'm Bella, and I'm thankful for two parents who love me and two siblings who also love me, and for a warm home that I can always come home to. My name is Jake, and I'm thankful for my bed and my mama. My name is Heather, and I am thankful for Foundry Church inviting and welcoming my family here. We've been here for about a year now and I'm extremely thankful for the opportunities to serve here and the people that are just so warm and welcoming to my family and my small group that we've met um, and got to meet more people here at the Foundry. 
My name is Logan Middleton and I'm thankful for my mom. My name is Rob Terpstra and I am so thankful for the way the Holy Spirit has touched people in this community and allowed this church to grow. The connections that have been created like with Eric Peterson and Benjamin's Hope allowing us to expand our footprint of God's kingdom. Okay, my name is Nancy Schaefer. I'm especially thankful that I have been able to call the Foundry my home and just a very friendly, welcoming place and very challenging to me spiritually. Hi, my name is Nancy and I'm thankful for a church that encourages me to be bold and courageous. I am thank you for mommy. I'm thankful for an amazing family, a very supportive wife who not only works a full-time job but always makes sure that I'm where I'm supposed to be and our two busy kids are always where they're supposed to be. I'm thankful for how much food I have and that we never run out and that um, my mom makes the best dinners. My name is Carla Kuiper and I'm thankful for the Foundry Church and all of the volunteers. My name is Ellie Kuiper and I'm also thankful for the volunteers and the Foundry Church. I'm Kyle Nelson and I'm thankful for my degree and all the friends I've made in my college career. I, my name is Ethan Folkes and I am thankful for football and the Broncos. My name is Kaylee Malicious and I'm thankful because we have a happy, healthy baby boy. Hi, we're the Aquilar. We're thankful for the Foundry and I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my family and having an opportunity to help grow our church. I'm thankful to be alive and to praise God throughout my days. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful that my parents are helping out here and thankful that I can go to school. Yeah. I'm thankful for my family and the people at church and my friends for helping me like discover like who I am and like what I'm supposed to do in life. And, yeah. My name is Lisa and this is Hudson. I am super thankful for my um, healthy grandson. My name is Mary Ellen Roth. I just want to take this time to tell you that I'm forever grateful for all that you have all done for me and that I just appreciate you all and just thank you so, so much. My name is Brian Smith and I'm very thankful for a beautiful, loving, caring wife for five wonderful children. I'm Ryan Mepelink and I'm thankful for a roof over my head and a family that I can share a hot meal with. My name is Peter. I live at Benjamin's Hope. I'm thankful for to my new nephews, and I thank you for, for Eric Peterson, and we're done. <laughs> well done. When someone ends a video like that, you're like, you just cemented the fact that you're the last clip shown. I love that. He's like, we're done. We'll be no more. Love, Peter. So we're going to jump right back into the text. We're in the middle of this, this section in Chronicles, uh, 1 Chronicles 16, and we're at right about verse 10, and it says this, Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. And I think there's something interesting going on here worth just spending a minute with and understanding that he invites us. God Almighty invites us to seek him. And I think this stodgy... Um, unrelational approach to God doesn't work in Christianity. It doesn't work to be non-relational in Christianity because God seeks, he, he wants us to seek him. He wants to be found. Let me ask you this. Who here has ever played hide and go seek when like mid-February, it's been a long winter already, and you're like, we're just going to play hide and seek indoors. Anybody ever do that? Maybe like it was June and we were bored. I don't know, but you played hide and seek indoors. It's good. And I know that you're, you're probably like, um, for me, it's not easy to hide this mask, but I can get it done. And there's been times where I'm like, you know, laying wherever I'm laying, I'm like, they're not going to find me. And I feel very satisfied in that fact. And so after a while, I get bored. And if I lay still for too long, I'm cashed out. So I'm like, I have to, you know, I have to help my be like, like, did you hear that? And one of them will be like, I think it's him. And I'm like, if it's not, we have such a big problem. <laughs> we have a person whistling in our house like that's not one of us. So anyways, I'm like, okay, so you're never going to be in this, you know, the FBI or anything. You're super not a detective. And so they'll be walking by. I'm like, hey, oh, I think that's him. You know, I'm like, you too. You know, just very three amigos just trying to look at me and I'm doing everything. Finally, like, ah, we found you. 
Great job, kids, <laughs> right? Don't, don't, let, let's be honest. Do you think God ever feels that way with us? Huh? Look at my word. I told you where I can be found. Hey, hey, like, find me, seek me. There's this relational aspect to God that just warms my soul. And I want you guys to maybe just, for us as a church, as individuals, you may say, Eric, I don't know that I have anything to be thankful for this year. I would say this, God knows you and he wants you to know him. Start there. I'm not saying it's not tough, but I'm saying maybe we should have some thankfulness in our hearts that God knows us and wants us to know him, that he's made it so relational that we're not in this horribly structured thing that says you can approach me only this way. He just says, come to me just as you are. Come to me. There's this relational seeking. It goes on in verse 11 to say it this way. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Seek his face always. Don't be afraid to reach out and find him. And the reality is, maybe this has been a tough year for you. Maybe you're ready to sign the final check of 2018, and hopefully 19's better than this was. Maybe you've endured loss. Maybe you've endured some kind of heartache that was unforeseen, a broken relationship, a series of misfortunes where you're like, man, this has just been a bad, bad year. And you're ready to be done. And you're ready to say, you know what? I'm just thankful that the year's over. And when you hear or you watch a video like that, it actually makes you weary to watch people be so happy and well-adjusted when you feel misfitted and very broken on the inside and the facade's wearing thin. I would invite you to do what verse 11, it says. Look to the Lord and to his strength and seek his face always. Seek his face always. And in seeking his face, we will do something that verse 12 calls us to. Remember the wonders of what he has done, his miracles and the judgments he's pronounced. David is not saying, pretend you've got it together. David is saying, look to the Lord and his strength and then remember, remember the faithful days of God in your life. Remember that in the darkest valleys, you weren't left alone. Remember his miracles. And I find this really fascinating, the judgments he's pronounced. I don't know about you. I've never been in front of a judge, but I will say this. I've been pulled over many a time by men, usually friendly officers. And when they say that moment, well, today I'm gonna, and you're like, let me off with a warning, <laughs> right? Anybody else have that moment? You wanna finish the sentence? And they're like, I'll write you this huge biscuit. And you're like, oh no. But they say, today I'm going to, and you're on the judgment seat. You're about to find out what the penalty is or is not. That's usually not your most comfortable moment. But how do, what is David? Remember what the, what the wonders that God has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. Here's what I believe. I believe thanksgiving for the church, for the people of God, starts with the judgment of God on our lives and the one who intercepted it. There was one who took your sin and my sin to the cross. And if you can't be thankful that you will stand before God someday and all your sin will be liquidated into the person of Christ and all his glory will stand over you and you will be seen under the banner of Christ. If you can't be thankful there, there is nothing we can offer you because in that moment, understanding that salvation is a gift to us where he didn't pronounce judgment on what we deserved, but he pronounced judgment on who he loved, his own son. And then he gave us the riches of salvation and redemption, your past redeemed, your present purposeful, and your future secure in him. If we can't start with Thanksgiving there, I think we've really got a big problem. Because Jesus did what we couldn't do. So even if our life is hard now, and I know for you and I, we've got things going on that are really frustrating and hard. We've got griefs that haven't been processed. We've got losses we didn't want to endure. We're facing difficult things, but we face them with a sure and steady promise that in Christ Jesus, none of it will go unnoticed. No tear will go unmet and no life will go 
without purpose because in Christ Jesus we find the judgment passed on us was one from life into eternal life. And we find hope in there. Today, we just take a moment and we're thankful for the judgment. We're thankful for what we deserved being handed out elsewhere and Christ enduring for us the burden of our sin so that we could share with him in the eternity of his life. Amen? Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, today we, your church, posture ourselves for thankfulness. We put ourselves in a posture of gratitude and we just say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for setting us free. For us who lived in sin and captivity for so long, for those of us who still feel the bondage of that captivity holding on to us, thank you, Lord Jesus, for setting us free. May our response in this song be one of gratitude. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, this next song we're going to sing, kind of close out with, is um, I think it's just a prayer with a tune to it. And I like to think that maybe God's still creating and in our worship of God, he's working out in us an attitude that is thankful for the work he's done. So I invite you, even if you're a terrible singer, much as someone I know myself, to join me in song as we give thanks to God for what he's done and who he did it through. Our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Join me as we stand and sing. Whether you find yourself in much or in much want, I know this. You have every reason to be thankful for who he is in your life. And the church's posture must always be one of gratitude, first for the work of Christ and second for the purposes of Christ in and through you. We have to understand who we are. We are people who are thankful. We have to know that thanking God is a lifestyle. So I invite you to go and to celebrate. Go have a great time with your family. And you might be like, Eric, they're a little weird. They're all a little weird. Enjoy it. They're a gift. Make the most of it. Let's go have fun celebrating a God who has richly provided for all of our needs, first in eternity and then in this life. And I don't need to hear the posterior jokes. It's all behind us. Oh, yeah. What is? All right. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are dismissed and I am sorry for doing that. Thanks for listening to the Foundry Church Podcast. If you'd like to know more about us, visit www.foundrychurch.net.